Dorit, girl, if you don't go sit your ass down, I'm so sick of her. She is so aggravating. I forgot how annoying that lady is. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Belle and this is the Belle Perspective. And today we are reviewing those crazy Beverly Hills Housewives. This is season 13, episode two, An Unwise Surprise. Was the surprise unwise? No, I thought it was a wise surprise. I think she just was Dorit just aggravating as hell. She's so damn aggravating. I forgot how annoying that lady is. Anyway, if you're new to my channel, welcome. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. We are growing by the numbers, okay? We are growing by baby, we, by, by by leaps and bounds, okay? Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Let's get into this review. All right, so Dorit invites EJ to a picnic outside. Now, child, is cold as hell, all right? If you're going to spring for the decor, you might as well spring for a heat lamp, Dorit. What, what the hell, Okay. Anyway, but it was still real pretty, but it was cold. I would have been distracted because it's cold as hell. All right. Anyway, Dorit brings it back up again, how EJ did not apologize. Shout out to y'all for telling me that my hunch was right, that EJ not only is a, not only is in villain mode, but she has been in villain mode for quite some time. Thank you for that. Shout out to all the people in the comments that gave me the heads up on EJ. Um, and then Dorit says that, you know, had what she said at BravoCon been said, you know, any other time it would have been hurtful. But it's even more hurtful because her and PK are now going through a rough patch. You know, Dorit had a home invasion. She said that she had taken $10,000 outside, taken $10,000 out for Christmas presents. She had her designer bag. She went to go try to purchase something and her bag was gone. And so she's, you know, experienced these two different, you know, very traumatic situations and it's made her, you know, experience PTSD and she's not feeling supported. She's not feeling seen. She's not feeling heard. So she's experiencing a lot of negative emotions and I, and she's not really getting the support that she would want um, and that she desires from PK. And that's unfortunate because that is your, your significant other and they should be able to find some sort of understanding if no one else can okay um she finally opens up and tells erica jane about this and they decide that they're gonna move forward they're not going to continue to be at odds with each other ej apologized dorit accepts it we move on i have a feeling that this is not gonna be the end of it but you know how it goes um sutton and garcelle love their relationship it is so cute it is so 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 cute they are real friends the Sutton and Garcelle are real friends real friends and I love seeing them for some reason y'all remember that Tyler Perry movie the family that prays uh what was it Alfre Wooder and Kathy Bates they remind me of each other <laughs> they, that's what Garcelle and Sutton remind me of just a really good friendship they've known each other for such a long time their familial stru structure is very similar you know, they're divorced, they have two kids and, or they have children and the ex-husband was, wasn't, she, you know, anyway, they're planning a Vegas weekend for Crystal. Um, so where the hell Crystal been at? We finally get to see Crystal this episode, y'all. I was like, where is she? And then where is that new girl? I want to see where the new people at. Anyway, all right. Um, she, Sutton and Gar Sutton calls Garcelle and they're having a conversation about the Vegas trip. And all the things that they're going to be doing on the trip. Later on that evening, a matchmaker comes. And I'm going to try not to go off on a tangent on this. But I have thoughts. First of all, Sutton is trying to put y'all up on game. Money is power. Okay? Money is power. This, this whole traditional men provide, men lead, men, you know, we're men. What, what exactly qualifies a man to lead please get down in the comments and let me know why you think just because he is a man that he should be leading because the only thing that a man has that a woman doesn't have well you already know okay y'all grown y'all grown y'all already know 
What is it that qualifies men to be the only leaders? Please somebody get down in the comments and tell me because I'm confusion. I do not understand. All right. I don't, I don't get it. And this whole men protect and provide and all that other stuff. Why? Women can provide for themselves as well. Why can't we all be on a level playing field? Why can't we all be on a level playing field? You do what your, you play your strengths. I play my strengths. We come together and we play them strengths together. Why can't it be that? With Sutton. No, Ugh, no, I don't. My boyfriend and I, we do not have a traditional relationship. I am not. It's very unconventional. I couldn't even be with some man who I couldn't do it. I, if you don't get away from me with that book, get away from me. Okay. <laughs> anyway, Sutton is trying to get a matchmaker. She better be quiet. Now she better be careful. Sutton is making $300,000 a month, y'all. A month. I don't know if she's just trying to date or if she's looking to get married again. And she's making $300,000 a month in spousal support. Sutton better stay single for the rest of her life, child. I would never give that up. Some man. It's a no for me, dog. It's a no for me, okay? All right, so we finally see Crystal and her husband. And I forgot that they were 20 years apart. I was like, Crystal what were you doing with this old white man Ugh. we see the brother crystal has a brother I forgot crystal's brother's name my bad y'all apparently according to crystal her brother is the justin bieber of china he's a cute little he's a cute guy now when crystal said that the brother had a fiance and she was a she i was like oh Y'all, I baby, the, the brother was giving team twirl. He was giving twirl. He was giving one of the kids. He was, he was, he was. I ain't gonna lie to you. But the engagement was called off because of the pan panorama and every Crystal and their mother was trying to get him to come back to come back to the States. And the fiance only had a Chinese passport and wasn't able to come over. I'm still trying to figure out why they had to break up. I don't understand why they couldn't just stay together, but I, I I don't know. Anyway, Crystal says she thinks that her brother blames her for their breakup. I'm still trying to figure out what the hell, why he couldn't just has, see why he didn't stay in China. But I also don't understand why they couldn't have had kept their relationship going. I don't know. Anyway, the brother is interested in, um, you know, dating someone new and moving you know, moving on with his life. He wants to get married at some point again. So good for him. Crystal's birthday is coming up. That's one of the reasons why they're going to Vegas because they want to celebrate Crystal's birthday. She is turning the big four. Oh, so congratulations to Crystal. She absolutely is a stick in the mud. I forgot about that. And yeah, because she went a whole episode and I hadn't seen her and forgot about her and didn't care. Okay. See the new girl. I really want to see how they're going to introduce her her to the girls. So anyway, all right. So we see Dorit and Kyle. Now I I was Kyle in this moment. Kyle looks so annoyed. <laughs> she looks so annoyed picking up Dorit, driving Dorit down to the to the Beverly Wilshire Hotel. She looks so annoyed walking with her to the hotel room. She just looked annoyed. Like oh my god, I got to hurry up and shoot this scene with Dorit. Oh my Lord, ma'am, can you please just open the door? Ma'am, can you please just come in here? Ma'am, can you please just sit down and shut the, can you please just shut up? Ma'am, can you just sit down? Can you just sit down and be quiet? Cause I got, this is a part of my, this is part of my contractual duties, ma'am. And you making it very, very hard for me over here. You making it very, very, very hard. Okay. I was Kyle. I was like, can you get in the car? Shut up. Don't touch nothing. Be quiet. Just shh, 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 shh. No, this is my quiet time. Okay. I got my music on. You don't, 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 don't talk over my music. I don't, we don't need, I don't need all that. Be quiet. Okay. She was so, she gets in the car. Now, mind you, Kyle is driving a 2023 Land Rover, Range Rover, one of them cars, a car that I would want. Baby, I would be pushing, because I drive an SUV already. Baby, I would be pushing the mess out that Range Rover. Do you hear what I am saying? Okay. Baby, we're pushing, a, pushing it. All right. Anyway. um, So she pulls up in the Land Rover, or the Range, I think it's a Range Rover. Dorit was like, oh my God, I'm so obsessed with your car, even though I already have one. Some haters, 
Y'all, that is some hater shit. Is that not some hater shit? Get in the comments and let me know what you think. Because that is some hater shit. Not, oh girl, I'm so obsessed with your car, even though I already have one. Bitch, shut the fuck up. Get in this goddamn car and shut the fuck up, okay? I can't stand you, raggedy hoes. Shut up. Yeah, she is so annoying. Okay, so PK has planned a, you know, anniversary dinner for her, anniversary surprise. The theme is Pretty Woman. Again, that tells me everything I need to know about PK and Doreen's relationship, but that ain't none of my business, at least not yet, okay? But anyway, so PK setting this up, wanted to do the whole, you know, Pretty Woman thing at the at the famous Beverly Wilshire Hotel, you know, he's setting it up and he just asked Kyle to basically be her transporter. Kyle was like, oh my God, I'm gonna do this one thing and then I'm finna go. All right. That's exactly how Kyle looked. That's how she acted. And I know she was relieved when she walked out that damn door after dropping Dorit ass off. I know she was because I was looking at her like, oh my God, girl. Ugh. Anyway, okay. So on the way there, Dorit is trying to be all up in Kyle business. And it's like, now Dorit, ma'am, now ma'am, 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 ma'am. It would be all fine and dandy if you was asking Kyle about Mo and if they are right, if your marriage was okay. But there ain't nothing like a nosy bitch who got her own problems to worry about. Ma'am, what in the hell are you concerned about Mauricio and Kyle when you and PK got your own problems? She was digging like, oh, so is everything okay with you and Maurice? Is everything okay with you and Mo? Is everything okay? Because I just feel it. I feel like, you know, I'm not seeing you on Instagram. I'm not seeing you. Girl, Kyle and Mo are doing just as good as you and PK. Okay, because you willing to get in her business, but you're not trying to tell her yours. Uh, Dorit, please, just, can you just ride in the car, girl? Pretend like I'm an Uber driver, okay? Just pretend like I'm Uber, okay? Just sit, sit here. Put her in the back seat. Put her ass in the back seat. Don't touch nothing. Don't say nothing. Be quiet. The music playing, all right? Just please mind your business, okay? Please. Mind your business, Dorit. Kyle didn't want to say anything, and I was Kyle. You know, Dorit was like, if you don't want to talk about it, just tell me. Girl, clearly she doesn't want to talk about it, Dorit. Dorit, Dorit's name sounds annoying, doesn't it? It sounds like DeWitt or something like that or Danat or something like just something like a buzzy. It's, it has like an insect name, even though I know it's, I don't even know what Dorit means, but it just sounds like somebody who would be annoying. I can't explain it. Get down in the comments. Let me know if you, if you understand what I'm saying, because it sounds like somebody that's going to be annoying as hell. She lives up to her name. All right. Um, so it's a split. We go back to Garcelle and Sutton. Garcelle is at the house doing something. I can't remember what she was doing. I guess getting prepared to go to Sutton's house. And Sutton is with her property manager. And they have this, the cutest exchange. Sutton is my girl, y'all. Sutton is my girl. I love Sutton. I really do. Garcelle and Sutton, those are my two girls. Those are my girls. Okay, so... Sutton is having this like exchange, this, this this wordless exchange with her property manager. And they have this whole conversation. I was like, I love that. That that's how you have a good relationship. So anyway, Garcelle comes over. They're having tea and water and barbecue. Baby, that food looked disgusting. What is is what they serving down in Beverly? Food look nasty. No wonder why y'all skinny as hell. Shit. Did did y'all see that? That macaroni and cheese. It wasn't baked. Shit looked disgusting. It looked gross. Did y'all see that food? That dry, and I don't even eat meat like that. Did y'all see that dry ass barbecue? It's like no wonder why y'all skinny down there. Y'all don't, y'all don't don't have no good food. Ugh, what is this? Is it Sunny's? Cause I don't do, I don't, mm -mm. I don't do like meat like that anyway, but um, I don't like chain restaurants like that because they, mm -mm. is this, it wasn't Sunny's? Because that mac and cheese, <laughs> that was the driest mac and cheese I have ever seen. I loved Sutton's green sweater. It was so cute. So, so cute. I love her little sweaters. She be having them grandma sweaters. Be so cute. Anyway, all right. So Garcelle sits down. She's out there opening up about the situation that she's experiencing with Jax and how Jax says that, he wants to go live with his dad and that, 
he felt like Garcelle wasn't there for him, you know, for the two years. And I, and Garcelle said it best. She thinks that Jack, Jax is asking to live with his dad. One of two reasons, one to punish Garcelle two so they can see how far he can get, how much he can get away with. And I think that listening to Jax, just the conversation that Garcelle had, the open communication that she allowed her sons to have, I appreciated that. But I also realized that you're still their parent. And what he's saying is contradictory to what he wants if that makes sense so he's saying I needed you I want you to be around but also I don't need you to parent me anymore so which one is it Jax and that's why I'm like you don't you hear what they say you let them talk about you tell them what they how they're feeling and I don't want to say take it with a grain of salt but but then you use your grown brain to figure out okay this is what needs to actually happen right because what he's saying contradicts itself i don't need you but i'm mad because you wasn't around because i needed you it's anyway get down in the comments and let me know i don't think that Garce some people in, in on twitter were saying that they felt like garcelle is a bad mom and you know good thing she's acknowledging that she's a bad mom she was a bad mom i think that she has to work and she wasn't there as much as she probably wanted to be but i don't think again just from the reaction from the episode before he I'm not, I don't think, I don't, I think that there's room for improvement, but I don't think that she was just some neglectful mom. Like y'all tell me what y'all think about, about that. Um, and this is where Sutton says, this is why I love our friendship. You know, this is why the ladies don't really understand our friendship because we have a lot of the same struggles, right? You know, we have a very involved ex-husband. We have, you know, teenage sons or sons that, you know, we've had to raise on our own. We're single mothers, it's a very different dynamic than the other women. And I was just like, oh my God, I love their friendship. It's so cute. Kathy, Kathy Bates and Alfre Wooder. It, it reminds me of that. All right, so PK plans. Here Kyle is suffering in the damn Beverly Wheel show. They finally get to the hotel. D Dorit is, oh my God, what are we doing? You're scaring me, Kyle. You're scaring me. What's going on? What's going on? Now, at first I thought she was going to be excited about it, but... When Kyle said Dorit is a control freak, I was like, oh my God, you're that much of a control freak? Girl. Then they get to the hotel. She was like, oh my God, this could have been a nicer suite. I was like, okay, nah, I ain't gonna hold her. <laughs> she right. But now it makes sense. This was the suite that he rented so that you could get prepared so that when he met with you, you got to a bigger suite. It's like, girl. You're aggravating. I don't know why he did any of this for you. Because you're annoying, okay? Because at first I was like, is this the room that he going? Is this the room that he going? That, that is a small room. I'm not going to lie to you. But then when he, we watched a little further, I was like, oh, okay, got it. So he hired her, her whole glam team, picked out several variations of red dresses, She's panicking. Now, this is before the glam team comes in. She's like, oh my God, where are my kids? Where are my kids? And I said, Dorit, now you wasn't worried about them damn kids when you was going to lunch with, with Kyle, getting in the car. Oh my God, I'm so obsessed with your car. Now, you wasn't worried about them damn kids when you was headed to lunch with Kyle. But now, all of a sudden, you worried about the kids? Dorit, you are so annoying. Girl, sit down. She, I need to take a breath. I need to go outside and breathe. I need to check on my kids. Her kids, she calls the kids. Kids like, mom, please relax. Happy anniversary. Dad is fine. You're going to enjoy it. Please just sit down and shut up. Okay? Kyle was just like, oh, please. Just, PK, your wife, get her so I can hurry up and go. PK, it, he's, ooh, PK shaded the shit out of Kyle in the confessional. He was like, you know, Kyle makes jokes all the time and gets glee when I do something wrong. But, you know, it's just because she's not used to Mauricio doing nice things for her. I said, ooh, ooh, no wonder why Kyle didn't want to say nothing to you about her and Mauricio having issues. Because Dorit ain't no friend. None of the women is friends. The only friends is Garcelle and Sutton. That's it. Um, okay, so she she picky, she controlling, she's effing annoying. But I wrote all of this. <laughs> I wrote all of this. Um, 
I was like, all right, I done dropped off. I did my job. Bye. Peace. Right. She was out. Um, she dressed. She looked stunning. Loved the dress. It looked amazing on her. He, PK meets her downstairs at the bar. They dance a little bit. Then they go up to a suite. Now, the music that was played was not from Pretty Woman. Now, there's beautiful music from Pretty Woman. They were singing a song from Top Gun. They, honestly, whatever. Whatever. She's complaining the whole time. They sit down, they're eating caviar. You know, it's this nice suite. It's roses everywhere, drinks everywhere. I mean, it's, just, it's a beautiful ambiance. And she's complaining. You know, I don't like when people pick my clothes out for me. I don't like when people are doing these things for me. It's like, girl it's your anniversary and he's trying to do something nice for you if you don't shut up and stuff your mouth up with this caviar and be quiet because we tired of you dorit oh she's so annoying why does this cap i know this is not the nicest thing to say but i see why pk ain't leaving her ass he they live in separate lives now i see all right so we get to portia's 15th birthday and portia is kyle and mo's 15 uh, youngest daughter i think she's turning 15 everybody and their mama's over at the house um, the mother-in-law pulls Kyle aside and asks, is everything going on with her and Mauricio? Because there's so much happening in the blogs. You know, they saw Kyle walking out somewhere. I think she had just come from the gym with no ring on. And the mother was like, listen, I've heard things here and there, but this is way more than just here and there kind of thing. Right. So Kyle was like, I don't know why the hell she asked me some bullshit like this at the party, right? I was already on one. She was already annoyed. She was like, me and Mauricio aren't seeing eye to eye. It seemed like everything Mauricio did was annoying Kyle. And I want to, you know, what I want to try to do is afford Kyle the, the allowance to feel how she feels, right? If she's annoyed, if she's not feeling satisfied, if she's not feeling connected, I don't want to dismiss those emotions. I don't want to dismiss those feelings from for her. But I also want to understand and make sure that she is being rational as she is feeling this. Do you know what I'm saying? Feelings aren't always fact, right? But they are, and this is coming directly from my therapist, feelings aren't facts, but they are um, notification bells, right? They tell you something deeper, something else is going on potentially, and it's your job to do the investigation, right? So I I want her to explore those feelings and understand where they're coming from, but I don't want them to, I don't want her emotions to lead her action. And I felt like that's what was happening in that birthday party. She was snapping at him and going off and just kind of being a little, you know, it was being, a, I'm like, come on, Kyle, please, please. I think, Anyway, y'all get down in the comments. Let me know if Mauricio ain't shit. Please just tell me because I don't know. I forgot. I, I really forgot. So don't have me going up for somebody who ain't shit, y'all. Okay? They talk about getting tattoos. Now, here's where I was like, y'all at y'all big ass age. Y'all big ass ages. I know Kyle got to be something before 45, 50. Okay? She got to be 50 something. All right? Mauricio got to be cracking 50. Okay? You mean to tell me that you can't tell your mama you got a tattoo? And you mad that your mama found out about getting a tattoo? What? I don't understand. Get in the comments. Please get down in the comments. Let me know because I don't understand. All right. So the Vegas trip. So this looks so fun. I hope it's fun. But I can already tell from the previews. Sutton going to be tripping. Now Sutton is my girl. But she looked like she was kind of tripping a little bit. All right. So Vegas trip. They're doing all of it. Magic Mike. They about, they about to be outside, outside. Okay. Outside. Kyle has a private jet. I was like, now this is what I watch. Housewives for private jets, baby. I want to see the Louis Vuitton, baby. I want to see the Celine, okay? I want to see the things that I cannot buy right now, but I will at some point, okay? Because I'm going to be a rich black woman. Hello? All right. So I want to see what they doing. I want a private jets, the popping, the, 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 the Dom Perignon. Are, wait, are they still drinking that? I don't know. Whatever the rich people do, that's what I want to see, okay? That's what I want to see. So private jets, sign me up, okay? So they're getting on this private jet. They're headed to Las Vegas. They're about to, you know, enjoy all of the things of the Las Vegas Strip. Be careful because I heard they got the bed bugs down there, y'all. Anyway, um, all the girls are meeting in the, I guess, in the lobby to get on the plane. The person who looked, Kyle looks comfy cute. Erica Jane looked the cutest. She had the cutest outfit on. I, yeah, Kyle had the cutest outfit on. I'm sorry, not Kyle. Erica Jane had the cutest outfit on, but Kyle looked comfy cute. 
I probably would have. Well, Erica Jane had on because it looks comfy, but still stylish. And then Kyle had stylish, functional, huge. If that makes sense. So anyway, um, but everybody else looks. <laughs> and I don't know what the hell Sutton had on with that damn sweater. She had a stomach out. You saw something. You saw something with a stomach out. I was like, okay, Sutton, with your stomach out, girl. Okay. So they get to Vegas. Now, here's where I was like, okay, now y'all, what's going on? Why are we sharing rooms? We sharing rooms, y'all. What what's happening, y'all? We can't have our own separate rooms. Y'all flew on a private jet, but y'all don't have separate rooms. Mm-mm. <laughs> See, they had me and they lost me right in that same moment. Why why are we not why are we not in separate rooms, y'all? What was what is this? What is this? We're adults. And I mean we adults. Adults. Okay. I don't want to share no room with no woman. I don't want to share no room with nobody that I'm not sleeping with. Please. Anyway. Y'all get down in the comments. Now the room was beautiful. Like these suites were absolutely gorgeous. They were gorgeous. But we grown. Y'all is in y'all 40s and 50s. Why are y'all sharing rooms? Nasty work. Anyway, y'all get down in the comments. Let me know what y'all think about the episode. Okay? And I'll see you guys in the next one.